hello, hello, and welcome to Women of Color, Money, and Legacy, where I talk money matters. I share strategies to empower us to become financially literate in terms of managing our money wisely, building generational wealth, financial freedom, and creating a legacy. Now, if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. That being said, let's just jump right into it. In my last video, I talked about the racial wealth gap in America. I cited data from various sources to give you an overview of the factors that have contributed to the wealth gap in America. Included in the data, I shared the comparison between black and white household investments. I contrasted how 31% of black household participants in, participated in their 401k plan compared to 61% participation of white households. And the average value of stocks owned by blacks amounted to only $14,000, nearly a quarter of what their white peers held. And as I mentioned, the primary vehicle for building wealth is the stock market. And that's what I want to focus on today. We need to invest more in the stock market and the sooner the better. Now you're never too young, you're never too old to invest. Now naturally, if you're over 55, your investment strategy is not gonna be the same as someone who is 40 years or under. Uh, when you are a young investor, you can be more aggressive because you have lots more time to recover any losses. As we enter retirement, we should continue to invest for the next generation of our family. We should also be teaching our children about money early in life. As parents, rather than buying your child that latest release of Air Jordans, consider taking that $300 and invested it in your child's future. We need to do better in terms of prioritizing what is best interest of our family over the long run. So let's dive into the stock market. The best way to start investing in the stock market is to set up an online brokerage account and trading platform. Now I'm old school, so the two platforms that I recommend would be Fidelity Investments and TD Ameritrade, but there are a whole host of them. You have Charles Schwab, you have Rebull, uh, Webull is called, not Rebull, uh, Robin Hood, and the list just goes on. Now, Fidelity recently became the first retirement plan that allowed you to uh, invest in cryptocurrency in their 401k account. So that goes to show you how far we are evolving. And I'll talk more about cryptocurrency in another video. And let me just say from the start that I am not a financial advisor. I'm only sharing information about what I'm doing and what has worked well for me. I'm going to share some stock picks that I've invested in only for your consideration. So please perform your own research and due diligence or seek a financial advisor. Now, that being said, you'll want to open two separate brokerage accounts. Your TD Ameritrade account will be for trading, buying and selling stocks on long term and short term. Now, your Fidelity account will be used for long term investing for the sake of building generational wealth. This is your legacy money that you're going to pass on. Now, unless you are an experienced investor, I recommend you setting up both brokerage accounts as cash accounts, not marginal accounts, because marginal accounts, you're borrowing money to invest, and our goal is to get out of debt. So don't open these accounts as marginal accounts, okay? Now, when it comes to the stock market, there are two types of market. You have the bull market and the bear market. A bull market occurs when stocks are on the rise and you're making money but it's not the best time to invest because the price of stock is increasing. Ideally, you want to buy low and sell high so that you're making a profit off of your initial investment. So the best time to invest is in a bear market. A bear market occurs when stocks fall for a period of time. This is the time you wanna go shopping when companies are on sale at a bargain price because inevitably the stock market is going to go on that bull run again. Now, on average, bear markets take about 13 months to go from the peak high to bottoming out and 27 months to get back to break even. And this has been the cycle since World War II. The stock market is like a roller co coaster. It just goes up and down and up and down. And when it's down, I don't panic. It's just a paper loss. I'll get it back as long as I don't panic and sell. The stock market is going to recover and go on another bull run. I just have to be patient. Now, I'm recording this video in late May. Stocks have been falling for close to six months now. Now, some stock market experts are saying that we're already in bear territory, while others are saying that a bear market is on the horizon. Now, judging from my own portfolio, it feels like it's a bear market to me. But knowing when the stock market has bottomed out or reached its floor is anyone's guess. The upside of a bear market is that stocks go on sale and you can buy these companies at a bargain basement price, as I mentioned. 
And when the recovery starts and the stocks start to rise again, you're in a great position to make a lot of money. And this is where a lot of people become millionaires over the span of two to three years. According to S&P Dow Jones indices, bear markets occur about every four years and eight months, on average since 1932. So now is the best time to start investing. And if you're already an investor, it's the best time to start dollar cost averaging in. And whether in a bull market or a bear market, it's not uncommon for stocks to become volatile on a short-term basis, say a few days or a couple of weeks. And a few factors that will affect the stock market and cause it to fluctuate Number one are company-related factors. If the company had a bad quarter financially, it's going to affect the stock price. If Elon Musk, who is the richest man on the planet, comes out and says something good or outrageous, it can not only affect Tesla stock, but it can also affect tech stocks in general, okay? The second thing that can cause the stock market to fluctuate are interest rates. And with the current inflation, we've seen interest rates increase which has created investor fear and caused volatility in the stock market. The third thing is politics. Elections, change of administration, or a bill being passed or overturned will usually cause fluctuations in the stock market, okay? is current events. Take the war in Ukraine, believe it or not, had a temporary impact on the stock market. An announcement regarding the state of the economy will have an effect on the stock market because these are things that create fear and cause people to sell off. And the fifth thing are acts of God, tornadoes, hurricanes, and other natural calamities will affect the stock market. And of course, there are other things that will affect the stock market. It's usually only temporary and the market will bounce back in a short period of time. I just want you to understand the volatile nature of the stock market so that you don't panic and sell every time the stock market shows some disruption. There are a few stocks that I want you to consider investing in at this time. In your TD Ameritrade account, I'm going to share five stocks that I own that I recommend that you consider. Remember, I'm sharing this information in late May. A week or more may pass before you see this video. So just know that when you watch this video, the share prices will not be the same. They could be more, but more than likely they're gonna be less if we're already in an official bear market. Now, I recommend that you start by selecting two of these five stocks, no more than three. As you learn and grow about the stock market, you can add more. Now, personally, I do not trade more than 10 stocks at a time. The first stock that I would have you consider is Vanguard Total Stock Market Index Fund, ticker symbol VTI. Every portfolio should have at least one ETF as the cornerstone of their portfolio. So I highly recommend that you consider this Vanguard ETF as one of your stock picks. It's currently traded at $195 a share. The second stock is ChargePoint, ticker symbol CHPT. Now ChargePoint is a technology stock. In case you didn't know, electronic vehicles are the wave of the future and ChargePoint produces charging stations for electric vehicles. I'm sure you've seen cars plugged into these tall uh, charging units in a parking lot at your local shopping center or a designated EV charge station. And ChargePoint's current share price is around $11 per share. Now, Tesla is considered the godfather when it comes to the EV industry. It was founded in 2003 to replace combustion engines that has the potential to reduce emissions and help address this climate change crisis that we have. Tesla released its first electric vehicle, the Roadster, in 2008, and it has been the front runner in EV car production. Now practically all major manufacturers of vehicles are investing in electric vehicles in order to compete. In fact, Ford has committed to investing at least $30 billion in electric vehicles through 2025. It projects that half of its vehicles will be electric by the year 2030, which brings me to my third stock pick for you to consider. I'm going to share three EV car manufacturers, but only select one, either Tesla, ticker symbol TSLA or Ford, ticker symbol F or General Motors, ticker symbol GM. Tesla stock has dropped some. It's currently trading at $711 per share. And some experts have forecast that Tesla will actually hit $3,000 a share by the end of 2025. Ford is currently trading at $13 per share and GM is currently trading at $36 per share. 
These are the three car manufacturers for you to consider investing in. The fourth stock I would have you consider is PayPal, ticker symbol PYPL. And you're probably familiar with PayPal. It's an online payment system and it's currently trading at about $81 per share. And the last stock I would have you to consider is Riot, ticker symbol R-I-O-T. Riot Blockchain is a cryptocurrency mining company. Now, cryptocurrency is no longer considered a fad in the mainstream, but is a viable currency exchange. It's accepted by major institutions and merchants around the world. And what crypto miners do is provide security and verifies crypto uh, transactions. Riot Blockchain is considered one of the top cryptocurrency mining companies and is currently trading at about $7 per share. So there, I've actually given you seven stocks to consider, including the three electric vehicle stocks. And as I stated, of the five I mentioned, only choose two or three to begin with. This is for trading in your TD Ameritrade account. Now let's move over to our Fidelity investment account. And this is the platform where I invest for generational wealth and legacy. In this account, I challenge you to consider investing $5 a day in another five stocks. Now I actually invest $10 a day, but I'm not proposing that for you unless you just want to, then go for it. Of course, the more money you invest, the better in the long term. Now in your $5 a day challenge, you're not going to be buying full shares. You're going to be buying fractional shares, also referred to as partial shares. A fractional share is less than a full share of a company. In other words, you're buying a slice of that company. For example, rather than buying a full share in a business, you could purchase a quarter of a share. Let's say the full share price is $100. You could purchase a $25 piece of that company or a slice of that company. One of the benefits of fractional shares is that it makes it easier to invest in companies with high share prices. Let's say Tesla stock is trading at $1,200 a share. You like the company, but you can't afford the full share price, but you can't afford $5 a day or $40 a month. And you can just keep buying fractional shares at your desired amount. And these fractional shares add up to whole shares as you continue to invest month after month, year after year for the next 20, 30, 25, 30, 40 years. You make the same percentage gains and get the same benefits as a, a full share investor. You also take the same risk of loss. Now, not all brokerages allow investors to buy fractional shares, but Fidelity is among those that do. And here are the five stocks that I recommend you consider buying partial shares at $5 a day. I selected these five stocks because they are stable companies that have been around for a long time and will probably be around for decades to come. Remember, these are your generational building stocks. The first stock that I will have you to consider is another ETF, Vanguard S&P 500. Ticker symbol is VOO, currently trading at $358 per share. Now the second stock I would have you to consider is Ford or GM. Now choose the one that you didn't add to your Ameritrade account. I've given you the ticker symbols for each of those. The third stock I would have you to consider is Disney, ticker symbol DIS. And we're all familiar with Disney. It's an entertainment company and media company currently trading at $120 per share. The fourth stock is Apple, ticker symbol AAPL. And as you probably know, Apple is a technology company that makes computers, your iPhone, and software. Currently trading at $138 a share. And the fourth stock is Morgan Stanley, ticker symbol MS. Now Morgan Stanley is one of the largest global banking and financial services company in the world and currently trading at $79 per share. So there you have the five. And let me say that these current prices are bargain prices due to the stock market now being in bear territory. They should result in significant gains once the market recovers within the next two to three years. I'm quoting these current prices so that you can look back later and see where these stocks were at any given time or at this given time. Let's do a breakdown of our $5 day challenge. You have $5 a day for 365 days, which equates to $1,825 annually. Take that $1,825 divided by 12 months, it gives you $152 a month. So you're only investing $152 a month in your challenge. $152 a month 
divided by your five stocks equates to $30.40 per month per stock. And you can have that $152 a month automatically drafted from your bank account. That's what I do into my brokerage account. And on a specific day of the month, let's say on the 15th, you can go in and you can purchase your fractional shares. And buying fractional shares in Fidelity is very simple. You can either download the app and buy fractional shares on your phone or you can do it on your computer. If you're on your computer, just open your brokerage account, place your cursor on the link entitled Accounts and Trade at the top left of the page and select Trade from the drop down menu. Enter your stock tickle symbol in the search box and hit enter. At the top of the next page, next to the word trade at the top left corner, it will say fractional share trading is now available. Click on the simplified ticket link. You will see the actual name of the stock and the price at which it is currently trading. To make your purchase, you want to click on the options buy, dollars, and market. Again, click on buy, dollars, and market. Enter $30.40 for your amount. Next, click preview order. Preview your order and click place order button. It's that simple. And repeat these steps for your remaining four stocks. And there you have it. As I stated earlier, this information is just for your consideration. It's what I'm doing now and what's working for me. Research these stocks for yourself. You might come up with different companies that you like better and that's fine. As far as resources, go to Yahoo Finance and do a ticker symbol search and learn more about any stock that you might be interested in. And tipranks.com is another website you can use to learn more about specific stocks and get performance analysis from people who study the stock market on a daily basis. I also recommend that you watch the YouTube channel called Stock Up with Larry Jones if you want daily updates on what's going on with the stock market. I watch this channel on a regular basis because I don't have time to keep up with what's going on minute by minute in the stock market, but that's all he does. And I'll put links to all three of these resources in the description box below. Next week, I'm going to get into budgeting. A few weeks ago, I talked about getting your financial house in order and building a stable foundation. Well, budgeting is very important when it comes to financial stability. In fact, it is a key component of financial planning. So I'll be deep diving into budgeting. I'll circle back and talk about cryptocurrency at another time. So that's going to wrap up for today. I pray that this information has been helpful. Thank you so much for staying until the end. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And click that notification bell to receive an alert each time I upload a new video. I really appreciate it this time and until the next time, take care my loves and bye for now.